to TSM and try to capture each and every value from our regression model. So from our regression, it turns out to be that these are the uh, coefficient, this is the intercept, and we are looking at beta uh, p. So beta p represents the, uh, the thing that is multiplied by p foot, the log p foot. So this is going to be our beta p. So it's minus 0 0.15. Okay, so if we go back to our sketch pad, it is minus 0 0.5. So we know that beta p hat, so I'm just going to change the color, beta p hat is minus 0 0.15. Right, this is what the uh, one five five nine, right? One five five nine. So here it is, one five five nine. This is our beta. Our sigma, which is a standard error of beta p, is given as follow. So this is beta p, which is a standard error of, uh, which is zero point zero four uh, seven. 0 0.04 I'm gonna write it down 0. Uh, 0.04784 so if we go back to our sketch pad Sigma is gonna be 0. 0.0478 so we know that these two two parameters we only would like to know this now to know this, we need to understand what, what is alpha. Alpha is equal to 5%, which is 0 0.05. And the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is equal to n minus the number of parameters, which in our case is 4. So what is n? How many, how many, uh, uh, this n stands for how many observations do we have? Now remember here that we have to look at the observation. So what we mean by observation is, if we look at the original data, we have the data from 19... Uh, 59 until 2003 so if we go back to calculate n which is available here n is equal to uh, 2003 which is our minus 19 59 plus 1 this will be our uh, sample size okay so it becomes it turns out to be that this is equal to 45 and why is 4? 4 is because we, we if we look at the uh, uh, distribution, if we look at uh, if we look at this, it turns out if you look at how many uh, regressions we have, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these are the parameters which represent 4. So we have now know how much, what is the degrees of freedom? The degrees of freedom is equal to, in our case, it is equal to 45 minus 4 which is equal to 41 so this is going to be the degrees of freedom so now that we know alpha and we know the degrees of freedom we can simply find t alpha over 2 okay so t alpha over 2 is t of 0 0.025 because alpha is 0 0.05 right so we want to check up this with a degrees of freedom which is 41 okay this is 4 Okay, 41. So let's go and check this out from TSM. So now we are going to TSM. We need to check the critical values. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, there is something that we need to understand in TSM. So first of all, we have to look at our critical value. Remember that I told you T alpha over 2 is a critical value. So if we look at the critical value, we should be careful about putting student t or absolute value of student t. We're going to go with student t to find the upper level. And remember that the tail probability, so we have to select upper level, the tail probability should be 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.025. This is because alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. And the degrees of freedom is 41 because this represents 45 minus a number of parameters, which is 4. It's equal to 41. And then we say, okay, critical value. So you know that the critical value of is going to be 2.0198. Uh, so now this is T alpha over 2. Now, I want to tell you something, that if we press on absolute value of T alpha over 2, this is somehow telling TSM that we are only talking about the exclusion probabilities. Okay, so this means that if I want to draw it, 
um, we don't want to erase everything but basically what this is telling TSM is that he is simultaneously looking for T alpha over 2 just by knowing alpha which is 0 0.05 and knowing the degrees of freedom so I'm gonna go back to the TSM to TSM and tell you what, what this means so for example if we said now we only give it alpha to be equal to 0 0.05 and we selected the absolute value of uh, uh, student t and we find the critical value we'll see that these are the same so don't worry when you are uh, uh, telling tsm to be absolute value of t or student t these are somehow the same but you have to be careful about what is the probability when you tell them absolute value tsm simultaneously understand that he's taking from both sides not only from one side this is because of the property of absolute value but when you give him only student t, then you have to be critical about what, you know, what is your upper tail or lower tail, which we're going to talk about this in our second question, part B. Okay, so I hope this uh, explains the thing. So now we know that t alpha over 2 is, uh, is, is 2.08. So I'm, uh, you can write them anywhere, but you can write them on TSM, you can write them on Excel. I'm just going to write them on Excel for now just to... Um, tell you what this is so this is t alpha over 2 alpha over 2 and this is equal to 2.01954 okay and let's say we want to compute or calculate uh, the other thing which is if you remember we have to find beta hat beta hat of p food right is equal to minus uh, 0 0.0 so this is beta hat beta hat of p and the other thing we want to find the standard error of beta hat and it is equal to minus 0 point so i control c and control v over there so you know you know all of these are there anything else that we need to find the critic uh, the interval so as you can see we only need these three variables so if we know these three variables we can find the upper and the lower limits the, the upper and the lower bounds you can either use tsm or you can use excel whatever really is suitable for you uh, how to use tsm i'm gonna go through this in a in a bit detail so the, in tsm you will see that there is a calculator a calculator that is somehow um, somehow available somewhere over here so the calculator is available somewhere here in the setup if you go to setup you can see calculator and if you write things on tsm remember that it is beta hat so we can comp copy ctrl c ctrl v and then it's minus sigma so so this is our sigma which is i'm gonna copy ctrl c ctrl v times times what uh, times the t alpha over 2 right so just want to see if this works no, it doesn't work so we have to press on this and we have to copy oh no it did take it right so it's over here and then we say we hit go so you'll see that you have this is your upper level the lower level is nothing but this you have to change it to a plus sign so if you change this to a plus sign and you hit go, you will see it. So basically the interval would be something between these two things. So minus 0 0.25. So if we go and plot, uh, draw it over here. So I'm just going to take this to the other side. I'm, uh, if you press on the sketchbook. So our beta, I'm just going to erase this. So our, uh, our interval... Is going to be given as follow so our interval is going to be beta hat minus sigma t alpha over 2 which i found it to be minus 0 0.25 uh, 25 and this guy is going to be minus 0 0.0592 uh, this is going to be the 95 percent confidence interval of beta p you can do the same thing for beta q but i'm i'm gonna satisfy with myself with 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to point a very important uh, point that I haven't made clear before, which is, you see that this is a 95% confidence interval. Does zero belong to this interval? Obviously not. And therefore, if, the, if we were to test the null hypothesis, if we were to test the null hypothesis, beta p equal to zero, and the alternative, which is beta p, not equal to zero, we can see that obviously based on the 95% confidence interval, we're going to be rejecting beta, uh, we're going to re reject the null hypothesis, which is beta p equal to zero. And we are going to be in favor of the alternative where beta p is not equal to zero. In fact, we are in favor of the null alternative hypothesis, which is beta p is actually negative. Uh, so we can see this in TSM when we look at uh, at the p-value over here. You can see p-value is zero, which is much lower than 0 0.05. And this implies that we reject the null hypothesis, uh, even for log food. So here it is. It's 0 0.002, which is much lower than 0 0.05, and therefore we're also going to be rejecting the null. Whenever the p-value is more smaller than 0 0.05, this means that we reject the null hypothesis of 5%. Uh, we reject the null hypothesis uh, with 95% confidence interval. Here it's even better. It's 98%. We, re we reject the null with 98% confidence. Okay, so I just want you to be, under, uh, you know, to point this important. Uh. Now we want to go to the other example, which is uh, we're going to go to the second exercise. Does the law of demand if the null hypothesis beta p is equal to zero against alternative beta p is negative? We definitely have answered this in a very subtle way, but we want to go into a bit more details about this. First of all, we need to understand what do we mean by one tail test? What do we mean by two tail test? What we have done before is a two-tail test. So if we want to dwell into the details, so I'm going to erase this. So if we want to go into the details, when we are testing for a two-tail test, uh, we are looking at the tails of the distribution, right? So we are looking at this tail and that tail. So this is absolute value of the t-statistic. However, sometimes we are only interested in testing one thing. So basically in this thing, the first one, is usually the null hypothesis is given that beta p is equal to zero and the alternative is beta p is not equal to zero. This means that it can not be equal to zero either in the negative side or the positive side. The other sometimes the other time we were we are interested in the right tail test. So basically the alternative or the hypothesis would be beta p is less than a certain number zero. Okay, or the alternative would be beta p or equal. So basically this is equal beta. Beta p is greater than zero. Okay, in this case, what we are really interested in is, this is known as a right tail probability where we are finding only t, t alpha over two or t alpha, not t alpha. This is t alpha over two because we know that the area, the sum of the areas of these two things is gonna be equal to alpha. And this is minus because it is symmetric with respect to zero. The t distribution is symmetric with respect to zero. And this is a t distribution. It's also symmetric with respect to zero. But here we are talking about this is a level of significance, which is alpha. Okay. This is known as a right, uh, right tail because you see it is on the right hand side. So it's right tail. Testing for right tail. And then we could have also the alternative, which is the other uh, thing. So I'm going to change color. Which we're going to be having testing for the uh, left-hand side tail, which is minus T alpha. T alpha or uh, And this is given by, uh, you know, the left tail. So we call this the left tail. And usually the null hypothesis in this thing is beta P greater than or equal to zero and the alternative is beta p smaller than zero so this is known as a left tail test okay so we really need to compute this particular critical value of uh, uh, of the teeth distribution okay in our second question we are going to be asking uh, how to uh, you know how to tell if we're going to be accepting this null which is beta p is positive or rejecting it 
If you remember, we have mentioned that our beta p lies in a certain interval which is a negative interval, and therefore we are much more likely to reject this null hypothesis.